Okay, let's continue. So now we want to look at the explicit upwind. method applied to a conservation law. So remember the conservation law that we are discussing is of the form of the six. We write it in, in this form ut plus f of u x derivative degrees is equal to zero. So now it is no longer obvious as it, as it was for example for the nonlinear for the non-conservative upwind method, how can we determine the upwind direction? We can no longer stick the finger in the air and you tell us directly what is going on. How can we do that? Any ideas? If we imagine we had we have our values at the cell. We, you know, we say at the midpoint j, x, j plus one half. So we have this situation here. We have x. Here we have u. And imagine we have our grid point x, j here. We have our grid point x, j plus one here. And here we have then our. Uh, midpoint xj plus one half. If we imagine we have here a value say uj and we have here a value uj plus one. So they are given from the old time level. If we would imagine now that we had here they would define something like a problem in this way as we had discussed before, a discontinuous initial condition, then we know what will happen. In that case, we would have a shock. And the shock would move with the average of these values for the inducive Burgess equation. It would move then, in that case, next example to the right. So that's the idea. To use, and that is derived from the rankine new condition, so to use the rankine new new condition to give a the characteristic speed that is valid at this boundary, at this point, the midpoint uh, between the cell, between the grid point xj, xj plus one, xj plus one. So that is the idea. To get the characteristic speed from locally applying the ranking of the new condition. And that characteristic speed will then tell us from where, in which direction we are going. Characteristic speed. And we will call that now. We will focus on this point when we are at xj plus one half. Then we will call it aj plus one half. At the grid point, it's not the grid point, it is the midpoint, j plus one half. And given that formula, but it is not important actually, but uh, if we want to localize it would be then just the average of the grid points at j and j plus 1. That is determined, or can be determined, and we do it here, by the shock speed from the ranking of the new condition. That would be then uh, that we had in 17. And then we would get it in the following form. We would get that aj plus one half, that we, we call it s, times the jump in our conserved variable. We are 
focusing on now on this situation, is equal to the jump in the flux. That is our flux function f that in the conservation law that we are solving. We have it in number six minus the flux with u. So that is then clear then how we can get a j plus one half the characteristic speed when we have this difference here not zero because then we can divide and we get it immediately. However, if uh, we have uj and uj plus one equal, we cannot do that. So we must have also a condition for that. And um, we, what we can do, we can then use the definition of the characteristic speed. And the characteristic, the definition is dfdu. That is the definition of the characteristic speed. So we use the following, it is then 28, aj plus 1 half is equal to, where we can, we do this in this way, we take then, we divide by the jump in the conserved variable, and we get then the ratio of the flux jump, which is uj plus 1 minus f of uj, divided by the jump in the conserved area. And that we can do if the conserved variables are different. If not, we simply take the definition, and that is the df of u, and then it does not matter whether we, whether we take it at uj or at uj plus 1. If they are equal, they are the same. We can also imagine this as a limit. If we let this here uh, go to the limit when uj plus 1 goes to uj, then we get the definition of the, de of the derivative. So it is somehow a natural definition. Now that is now used to determine the upwind direction. So that will now tell us, if that is positive, we assume that the propagation from left to right, it's negative the other way around. So that will then give us this information. So a j plus one half, let's just highlight that here a little bit. That um, is used to determine the upwind direction. Then we are in a similar situation as we are, as we had for the linear advection equation. So that takes the role of the C, then, this a j plus one half. But it might be different at the right midpoint, j plus one half, x j plus one half, and to the left midpoint, x j minus one half, because it depends on the local values. the numerical flux function of the upwind path. Then the numerical flux function One name is defined in the book, Rho scheme, that is named after Phil Rho, um, one of the key CFD persons. Uh, he was originally in Cranfield in England, and then he moved to the University of Michigan, where he's still, I think, probably is. I think he's still active, actually. 
Some people also call it Rose approximate Riemann solver for scalar conservation, but it's easier just with the Rose scheme. So that becomes then, we use this idea for rain. We say that the numerical flux function to approximate the exact flux function capital F at this location is equal to now if a j plus one half is positive propagation from the left we take then the value from the left and we evaluate then our flux function that we have in the conservation of the capital F with the value that we have in the left grid point u j so that is the case if the characteristic speed that we have determined in this way is positive. If it's zero, you can also take that into account. Um, that uh, is also possible. So we have to make it a decision then whether we take it from the left or from the right. And if the characteristic speed is negative, then we have propagation from right to left. Then we evaluate at the upstream location, which is um, then taken uj plus 1. So that, that is negative. So that is giving us then the upwind, the numerical flux of the upwind. exercise for yourself and to make sure that you understand it, you can apply this for the linear vector equation. So this is now a little exercise for you. Consider f of u equal to c u, where c is constant and positive. j minus 1, we get the j minus 1 half, and then we get here c u j minus 1. And uh, then uh, what we should get from that is then, then the conservation form of the equation 21 the explicit upwind method for the linear evection. So that is a little exercise where you can see how we can combine things. So here we have been discussing now the upwind method for uh, scalar conservation laws, but we can go back and see whether by this method that we have now outlined, characteristic speed, how we determine then the numerical flux function, that we can actually couple back to the numerical method, the finite, the uh, explicit upwind method for the linear vector equation. <coughs> to give you an alternative form to this. Of course, when we would do the programming of this, um, we wouldn't like it, and especially MATLAB wouldn't like it, because we would then have these if statements, which interrupt then the process of doing the computations uh, quickly. So, uh, what we can do is that we can express this in a different form. So 29, OK, 
can also be expressed as that is then the form that you can use when uh, uj is uh, or the aj rather the aj is uh, changing sign if you know aj the character speed is always positive then you don't uh, you do that in the beginning and then you use this if you know that this is always for your problem negative you use this then we don't need a discussion but but when things are changing then this form is useful and it is the following I claim we can take the following, we take one half of the flux function of our conservation law, f at uj and f of uj plus one. And we subtract the modulus of the characteristic speed in the way we just discussed before times the jump in u, uj plus 1 minus uj. So I claim that this and the form we have on the left are identical. Can you see that? Just trying to prove. We assume that aj plus one half is greater or equal to zero. That is one case. Then this form here, fj plus one half is equal to one half f of uj plus f of uj plus 1 <coughs> and then we can remove the absolute value and we can use the definition and the definition was now we assume here also that uj is not equal to uj plus 1 we use definition that <coughs> and the definition was f of uj plus 1 minus f of uj divided by uj plus 1 minus uj. That is the definition of aj plus 1 half. <coughs> that is then multiplying the difference uj plus 1 minus uj. And now you see this cancels. This goes away and we get f of uj plus f of uj. So we get then f of uj, exactly what we should have. If we have aj plus one half smaller than zero, and again uj not equal to uj plus one, then we will have our numerical flux function according to 30 being one half again f of uj plus f of uj plus one, and now we have, if this is negative, the absolute value will be minus of this. Once more, if this is negative, the absolute value will be minus. Imagine we have the absolute value of minus 5 is minus of minus 5 is 5. So then we replace this absolute value by minus, and we get here a plus. So then we get here a plus f of uj plus 1 minus f of uj, that is unchanged, uj plus 1 minus uj. And that is then uj plus 1 minus uj. So this guy here then is minus the absolute value. That is, what the, that is the trick that we use here. Again, we can cancel that. Now we get two times f of uj plus 1 and the f of j goes. So here we get f of uj plus 1. Exactly what we should get. 
And if the, we have the situation that uj and uj plus 1 are equal, this is trivial, because then if they are equal, this goes 0. And here we have two times f of uj, which is f of uj. And then it doesn't matter if we have the uh, if uj and uj plus 1 are equal, we have this or this, they are the same. So then it's clear. So that means these two forms are equivalent. Now, that is general. You can apply that to any scalar conservation law. Then you have the explicit upper method by this concept. Now we want to get it for the implicit Fergus equation that we are considering here as our main example. So then we look now for the indice of the characteristic speed that we need becomes that was this aj plus one half aj plus one half what was the recipe taking the difference in the flux jump, the flux is now u squared half. So it means we have here the u j plus 1 squared half. That is our f of u j plus 1. Minus the flux evaluated with u j, f of u j is u j squared half, divided by u j plus 1 minus u j. And here we have the flux. So that is if. Uh, Leave a little place here. That is if u j is not equal to u j plus one. If they are equal, we take the characteristic speed, which for the indice of equation is u at j. So it means we get u j if u j is equal to u j plus one. But now you see here something. That makes things easy. You see here, we get here, we can get out the one half. Then we have here uj plus 1 minus uj times uj plus 1 plus uj. So the third binomial formula. So we get by this uj plus uj plus 1 half. And if we want to write this, we can also do that here. If they are equal, we can also write this in, in this form, uj plus uj plus 1 half. If they are equal, it's, it's the same. So that means the characteristic speed for the inviscid Burgess equation becomes simply the average. Say so uj plus uj plus 1 half. So that is then the conclusion characteristic speed that we use in the upwind method for the inverse Burgess equation is one half, we write it now in this form, uj plus one plus uj. It doesn't matter, but it is just the arithmetic average. So that tells us now from where the wind is blowing. So that will become interesting when we are uh, when we have different values of u. The sign of u is different. When the sign of u is just always positive, then it's clear. We use the uplink method coming flux from the left, f of uj. 
if everything is negative, f u j j plus 1, and if we have a situation when the sign is changing, this tells us from where we take the flux. So then the upwind method for the inverse Burgess equation becomes for the inverse Burgess equation. What we're discussing here is the numerical flux, so it has uh, the numerical flux. function is following our, we write it also as fj plus one half, that is equal to, and we have to take f of uj, which is uj squared half, if the characteristic speed which is then this one here, so the uj plus 1 plus uj half, if that is, we have said, if it's greater or equal to 0. You see, if it's equal to 0, uh, we get 0 anyway, so then it doesn't matter. But if it's positive, then this is then clearly the recipe. We take then the flux from the upwind direction, which is in the uj. However, if the characteristic speed is negative, we take uj plus 1 squared half. If this characteristic speed uj plus 1 plus uj half is negative. So that is then our upwind method. We can also write it in this form here. function is u squared half, so we get then, this will be this, this will be then the uj plus 1 squared half minus, and this will be the uj plus 1 plus uj half, absolute value, times the uj plus 1 minus the uj. So then we have translated the general formula for scalar conservation laws, which is this one, to our case, to the invisible Burgess. So again, when you have a problem where you know everything is of one sign, you use this formula. For example, if we have an upwind situation when all the u's are positive, then you use this as the numerical class. If everything is negative, you use this. But if you have a situation when the sign is changing, for example, just think of a sign x, for example, as an initial condition, somewhere it's positive, somewhere it's negative, then you use this. You can also this use this, but ifs are not very nice. So, then we have here clearly the situation of the uh, flux function, we have uh, derived the flux function, and um, let's see, yeah, we have it in the form that we had discussed before, so it depends only on the next neighbors. So in the formula, only uj, uj plus 1 enters to decide on the direction and also to compute the fluxes. Here we see it also. 
So that means from, from the, this formula that we have here, we see that the numerical flux depends only on uj and uj plus one. smaller than zero, take u squared half. So it will give u squared half whatever we do. And also here, if we plug in for uj and uj plus 1 u, we get u squared half here and here. And if this is equal, it cancels. So we get u squared half whatever we do. So we get u squared half if u is positive and we get u squared half if u is negative. So independent of what we do, we get u squared half. And this is indeed our, our flux function of u. So it means our flux for the upwind method is consistent. So that's the check. can we get the numerical flux at j minus one half? Numerical flux function at x j minus one half. So this is the, let's take this example, 33. The other it is uh, similar at j minus one half. How do we get that? We simply replace the j by the j minus one. So if we say here instead of j, j minus one, we get j minus one plus one half, we get j, j minus one half. So here we get j minus one, here we get j j, j minus 1, j, j minus 1. So we just level, take uh, the index 1 lower. So use 33 with j minus 1 for j. So then we get <coughs> 1 half will be u, j minus 1 squared half plus j squared half minus absolute value uj plus uj minus one half uj minus uj minus one. So the 
index is just shifted. And you can also do that for the 32, so it is very easy. And a hint, when you compute the fluxes, it makes sense to compute them just for all. Why? Because you will need the flux fj plus 1, for example. You need that as the, that is the flux to the right. You need that as the flux to the left when you take the next uh, flux at, at uh, xj plus 1. So then this flux is used here. When you do it for uj plus 1, n minus uj plus 1, n plus 1, divided by delta t plus, then you have here the fj plus 3 half minus the f of j plus 1 half divided by delta x is equal to 0 then you can use the same flux here. They are the same. Because the flux that is going out from the cell J is entering the flux uh, for the cell J plus 1. So therefore, you can do this trick. If you don't do it, you compute the fluxes twice. So that would be double cost. And in the end, you get then the explicit upwind method by simply using as time discretization the explicit Euler method. the form that we have already seen, it is in the, in the conservation form uh, that is, can write it, that it uh, is the conservation form. And that is then the 21 that we had already seen. We have the uj n plus 1 minus the uj, or time derivative discretization. UDT and our flux discretization is then done by FJ plus one half N minus FJ minus one half N divided by delta T. And these FJs that we have here, the FJ uh, plus one half N, that is simply meaning that we take the FJ plus one half our flux function. We take that with the values at the time level n. So that is meant by that. So then we have our, we know then how we compute the flux function fj plus one half, and we have seen how we can get also the fj minus one half, just index shift. 
and then we get from that the formula 34 is then when we just multiply by delta t and bring uj n on the right hand side and also the rest we get this form fj plus one half n minus the fj minus one half n so that is then the form how you would code it and then if you have computed these in the start of each time step just plug them in you have them just to shift the index so that you get the, the right one when you do that and that's it so the truncation error it's first order so the method that we have here because we have a first order we think of it uh, approximation in time by using the explicit Euler method and in space because it comes down to the simple upward discretization when the sign is the same and the stability condition we can do by linearization and the stability condition then becomes and that is um, so we imagine that we could get small changes and in the end we can do the analysis for the linear fraction equation where the C in the linear action equation using C equal to UJ uh, in the linear action equation. So that is, then we can get the answer from there. And it turns out the condition is that the current number is now dependent on each grid point because the values might be different, then the C is then, each time it is this um, uh, UJ, we do this linearization in that way, and that has to be smaller equal than 1. That has to be for all J. And that means we get then, we have to determine when the UJ the solution, the absolute value, is maximum, that will give us then the time step. So what we do is we choose the C max, the largest possible value of the current number, so that is maximum current number, and then from that we determine the time step, that would be then 37, but we say the time step is then this C max that we have chosen, and from the analysis of the linear vection equation, we know it makes sense then to choose it to 1, where actually the linear vection equation is exact, times delta x divided by the maximum over all j, and here it is important that you don't forget the absolute value. So then we can do the computations for exercise 8 that you will soon get. Okay, so then we have seen now how to do the discretization of, the, of conservation laws, scalar conservation laws, and in particular the inviscid Burgess equation by the explicit upward method. It will be then the characteristic speed that determines from where the wind is blowing and then we can just go ahead. Okay, so we stop here and we continue on that and looking a little bit deeper, one step deeper in this method and look also into other methods next week.